I'll just put that in there like that. And then I will... Uh, this is going to be a uh, maybe a rather in-depth uh, review slash test of the Solomon XA 3D Ultra 2 trail running shoes. Um, right off the bat, the the name of these is a mouthload in and of itself. Um, it's even kind of hard for me to remember the name and whatnot. So throughout the video. I'll just call them Solomons or uh, what have you. Uh, what these are, are trail running shoes. And what trail running shoes are is a cross between like a running shoe, like a tri uh, road running shoe, and a full on hiking boot. So what they offer you is a few features a few of the best features of each with not many of the drawbacks of either one. Um, so first off, why would you buy these? Well, if you're into backpacking, hiking, uh, pretty much any type of outdoor activity, you might be into uh, tactical type stuff, you might go to shooting schools, um, you might be an avid fisherman, hunter, you know, you might just walk around in the woods. And for a lot of people, you could even wear these for everyday activities. On top of that, like I said, trail running, um, kind of like cross country running, running, pretty much running through the woods, um, even just running on pavement, um, these shoes are great for that. A little bit of background, uh, Solomon, uh, as far as I've read, is an excellent uh, manufacturer of shoes. Um, I know back in the day they were connected with New Balance maybe um, and somewhere they split split ties or something I don't know full history but I do know that judging by the quality of these shoes that Solomon is a pretty good and reputable brand. I've only owned these a few months now but I wear them every day, including some days I wear them at work also. Uh, normally for work I wear a pair of Red Wing uh, leather work boots, uh, a six inch high leather work boot, steel toe, um, but there's some days when I know what I'm going to be doing beforehand, I don't need the steel toe uh, safety and everything. So in those instances I can throw these on. Uh, these are a good two pounds lighter per pair. They literally weigh about half the weight of my standard work boots. Um, at the end of the day, I have more energy. Um, throughout the day, I can move around faster and all that crap because there's less weight on, on my feet. Um, just within the past couple of years, the um, military has came out uh, doing testing and everything and I want to say they figured out that for every one pound of weight that's on your feet translates to I think about five to six pounds on your back or um, in a backpack so if you have a pair of uh, shoe boots or shoes that weigh two pounds less than your standard that translates to like 10 pounds, 10 to 12 pounds less weight in your backpack. Um, so that pretty much means uh, increased energy, increases how far you can walk or run or um, how tight you'll be less tired at the end of the day, whether you're talking about um, military operations, uh, backpacking trips, fishing trips, uh, you know, just hiking through the woods. Um, there are a few drawbacks to these shoes. And for the rest of the video, I'll call them shoes. I use them as hiking boots, but 
uh, some people will see that differently. They're more like shoes than they are like boots. Um, the advantage offered by full-on hiking boots um, with they tend to have a taller ankle. Uh, their main benefit is giving you increased ankle support, which means if you're going over uh, unstable uh, terrain and whatnot, you're less likely to roll your ankle. Um, in the woods, especially if you're talking about a bug out situation um, or trying to get home, a rolled ankle, it would just make a second disaster within the disaster itself. Um, so if you can avoid that, um, that just, I guess, increases your odds of survival. With that being said, the reason I bought these is I didn't want just a pair of hiking boots that I'd wear, you know, a few weekends a year to go on hiking and backpacking trips. I wanted a pair of shoes that I could wear with shorts in the summer and pants in the spring and fall um, that look pretty nice. Um, a pair of shoes I could also wear to the gym a pair of shoes I could go biking with, hiking, running, whether on pavement or through the woods. Um, so, but I just wanted to get one pair of shoes. So I think these shoes fit the bill. Um, like I said before, they don't offer as much support as hiking boots, but what that translates to is a lighter weight shoe which, like I said earlier, that will translate to um, kind of less felt weight on your back. Uh, real quick, these are a size 12. They run true to size. Pretty much every single pair of shoes and boots I own is a size 12 except for some winter boots, which I get one size bigger to wear um, thicker socks. But 95% of the shoes I own are size 12. These are size 12 and they fit perfectly. Um, not too tight, not too loose, um, just perfect. So in my estimations, they run true to size. So if you wear a size 12, buy a size 12. If you wear a size eight, buy a size eight. Um, one thing worth mentioning is I did buy these online. That's not very highly recommended because especially when it comes to backpacks and boots and shoes, it's best if you can try them on in the store and see if they feel um, good on your feet. With that being said, the reason I bought these online is I found these at a local sporting goods store um, and they were apparently on clearance for $129. I guess the MSRP is normally around $160 to $170. To some people that seems expensive, to me that's normal. My Red Wing boots, my work boots that I have to buy you know, every year, every year and a half, run between uh, $150 up to $200. So $129 um, sounded pretty reasonable. I tried them on there, um, tried the size 12 on, they fit perfect, they felt really good. Um, they felt kind of stiff for uh, tennis shoes but at the same time, these aren't tennis shoes. I wanted something that offered a little bit extra support, even if that meant a little bit less uh, flexibility and uh, looseness. So, um, after I tried these on in the store, these exact model, I started shopping around on the internet and I went to one of my favorite online vendors, which I don't want to give that information away right now, but in the future I'll probably do a video. But it's a pretty common, um, they sell a lot of outdoor attire, packs, sleeping bags, sleeping pads, that type of stuff, but they tend to be last year's models or two years, um, like they're older models. And because they're not the, you know, the latest and greatest model, um, these companies are kind of trying to get rid of them. So where I bought them from, they were selling them deeply discounted. On top of that, I got a, a coupon code, which when it was all said and done, I believe I got these for $55. That's right, 
I got these for $55. They normally, MSRP is about $160. And on Amazon and on a lot of other sites, I saw them for between $110 and $130. Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into these uh, into this review of this awesome pair of shoes. Uh, first off, let's talk about the weight. Um, when it comes to back backpacking and hiking and whatnot, I'm not a super ultra lighter, but if I can get lighter weight gear um, for the same price or maybe just a little bit extra um, without sacrificing that much stuff, if any, I'll buy that stuff. Um, it's plain and simple. It's um, to me, it's just being more efficient. If you can get the same amount of stuff or durability or capability out of something, and they weigh fifty percent less, um, I consider that efficiency. So, real quick, I'll pull the trusty scale out, and this pair of shoes. Uh, one pair or one one of the shoes weighs exactly one pound and 0 0.9 ounces. So uh, I'll round that up to one point one pound one ounce. So that means uh, both of them together weigh two pounds two ounces. If you compare that to um, this is like my older pair of gym shoes, a uh, Nike, um, really lightweight, non waterproof. Um, just kind of a gym shoe. I'd use these running and whatnot. Um, these weigh 11 ounces. Well, no, 12 ounces. So these weigh a pound and a half. Uh, these pair here weigh two pounds. So an eight pound increase. Like I said though, most hiking boots out there on the market um, that a lot of people think that you need for backpacking and hiking um, they can weigh anywhere from three pounds up to six pounds for a pair. And that's no exaggeration. An average pair weighs about four pounds, which is almost exactly double um, of this pair of shoes. Um, you are increasing your foot support and you're increasing your ankle support. And also if they go higher up on your ankle and they're they have a Gore-Tex or other type of waterproof lining. It means um, you can step in taller water before the water goes up and into the boot. Uh, while we're on the topic of Gore-Tex and waterproof, waterproofness, uh, this pair right here has a Gore-Tex lining. Um, they're the XA 3D Ultra 2. And I want to say um, just the XA3D are the non-waterproof or the XA Ultra 2 um, are the non-waterproof. These ones are the full Gore-Tex and um, there's pros and cons to that too. Um, a lot of newbies out there, they're like, well, if you can get Gore-Tex, you want Gore-Tex, right? Well, yes and no. They will mean your shoes will have a higher degree of water resistance. Um, but with that being said, it also means that sweat from your uh, feet will not be able to escape as easily as uh, really ventilated shoes like this. So you have to weigh the pros and cons, just like anything. If you're in a really wet climate, especially a cooler wet climate, <coughs> I'd go with the Gore-Tex model. If you live down in the desert where it's super hot and you're going to be sweating and when you're hiking it's going to be 80, 90, 100 degrees plus and it's super dry and arid down there, um, I'd go non-waterproof option. Um, it seems like you're sacrificing, but really you're not. If you were to wear Gore-Tex, you know, waterproof footwear down there, your feet would probably start forming blisters and your feet will constantly be just damp um, from the sweat, from your feet sweating and that sweat not being able to escape. It would drench your 
the inside of your shoe and it would drench your foot. Uh, so that's not the end of the world, but your feet wouldn't be all that comfortable. And on top of that, um, your shoes would start to smell really fast. Um, if, you're constant, if your feet are just constantly covered in a layer of sweat, your socks are drenched in sweat, um, you're going to be having really smelly feet. So, uh, real quick, I can already vouch for some of the waterproofness um, of these. I, I've already worn them in pretty uh, wet weather and they were just fine. Um, I would have liked to do some of this filming outside, but when I'm filming right now, it's bright, sunny, it's probably about 80 degrees outside, and no rain in the forecast for today. So we'll just try and replicate that inside. So for this experiment, I'm just going to use one of the shoes. Um, right here, I have a 9 by 13 pan with about an inch and a half of water. So what I'm going to do first is take some paper towel and put it inside of the shoe. That will tell us uh, some stuff. After the test, if the paper towel comes out and it's damp, well, it means some water does leak through. If it's soaking wet, it means they don't work at all. And if the paper towel is still dry, it means that these shoes are fairly resistant to water. Um, you might have noticed that I'm not calling these waterproof. Why is that? Well, Gore-Tex is labeled as being waterproof. But, you know, the fact of the matter is eventually, you know, if you're in constant water, water is going to get in your shoe some, somehow. Uh, it might be through the top, it might be through you get a hole in your shoe and water comes in there. But, you know, if these can shut off a light, light amount of water, um, that's an advantage. So, I'll just put that in there like that. And then I will uh, just attempt to put these in a little bit of water and I'll let them sit in here for a little bit. And one thing you have to understand is pretty much all boot, shoes and boots up to um, say like rubber boots, they're never going to be fully like waterproof. You know, like, yeah, you might be able to step in some puddles and whatnot, but if you're constantly walking through uh, four inches of water, your shoes are probably going to be get wet on the inside eventually. Um, the amount of waterproofness waterproofing capabilities it has will delay um, that time duration but you know I just want to mention that right off the gate one thing I can see right here there is a water a bubble of water that's just sitting there which means it's not soaking in that's good news um, this nylon fabric feels like some type of nylon it feels damp to the touch um, and I guess I better not touch it because that might actually force some of the water in. But right now, the shoes are sitting in about maybe two inches of water. And we'll just let them float. And let's attempt to... unlace so 
the bottom of this paper towel is damp. That's all the paper towel. Um, a lot of this paper towel is actually dry. It's not wet at all. So, I'll just let the shoe sit in there a little bit longer. Take it out of the water. Move the water to the side. And there's your shoe. The inside of it feels bone dry. Up by the toe. After this, I'm going to put them on, and that it's easier to tell if it's wet. Um, the top of the shoe, right up here, the inside is all dry. Back here is dry. They seem fairly. Uh, waterproof to me. Um, just for kicks, let's run the same test with uh, this. This is a standard running shoe. This is as basic as it can get. So we'll get a little bit more paper towel. paper towels in there. Let's see what happens. Let's splash some of the water up here right away if you're able to tell. Um, flip it on the side a little bit without making it go up into the boot. Flip it on this side a little bit. So what do you guys think the outcome will be? I can already tell you. This is soaking wet. So you can see water coming out, and more likely than not, I'll be able to dump some of the water out. So you can see. So, um, I'll leave it at that. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, come back to these. Put them on the scale. That will tell us if it did absorb water, and if so, how much. Before they were one pound, 0.9 ounces. And now they are one pound, 0.9 ounces. I'm not sure what these weighed beforehand. I wanna say they were about 12 ounces, these ones here. After getting them wet, they weigh 13.2 ounces, so they have about an ounce and a half of water. Uh, they absorbed an ounce and a half of water. So, in conclusion, do I think these are worth um, the high price? Um, in all honesty, yeah, I think they're worth it um, for, for a few reasons. Uh, first off is the Gore-Tex lining. Um, I've had a few quote-unquote waterproof shoes or boots in the past. They're not. They're, they're not waterproof. None of them have really been Gore-Tex. They've been like um, Cabela's has kind of their own dry plus uh, waterproof lining. It sucks. There's a few others that are supposed to be waterproof. They're not. 
um, even some quote unquote waterproof boots from, you know, high brand or, you know, reputable manufacturers like Vasks, um, Danner, Loa, um, just to name a few, New Balance. Um, I've had a few from all of those and they've had one type or another of waterproof lining. They're not waterproof at all. These ones, like I said, um, this in-lab uh, test, if you will, um, prove that these are quite waterproof. Uh, I've worn them a few days in just the heavy, really wet downpour. My feet stay dry. Um, and like I said, I think these are well worth the price. Um, this is, is my first pair of Solomons and it probably won't be my last. Not that I don't think these will last that long, but you know, buy them cheap, stack them deep. You know, who does it hurt if you have a few pair of extra shoes laying around that you might not wear all the time? Um, but real quick, I want to talk about this lacing system. I forget what they call it. Um, I didn't know if I'd like it or not. Turns out I do. When I was checking them out in the store, I did notice that if I didn't like it or this uh, lace broke, I could always cut it out and lace it traditionally. Um, I haven't found the need to do that yet and I probably won't. Uh, reading long-term reviews, uh, I guess this cordage has Kevlar in it somewhere, making it really durable. They stay tight and again, might be dependent on your type of foot, but with mine, pretty much all you do, I grab it here, pull it, grab it here, pull it, pull this down like so. The tongue's normally up a little bit. Stick the tab in this pouch, stick the end in, and either leave the loops out like that, or if you're inclined to do so, just jam those up there too. No muss, no fuss. Super streamlined, no tripping hazards. Um, so far as I can tell, uh, this lacing system is really durable stays tight throughout the day. Um, the only problem I have found is you can crank on these and make them too tight for your feet. It will actually constrict some of the some of the blood flow on the top part of your foot. <laughs> um, so your feet will start to literally fall asleep and get tingly and whatnot. That's one drawback, but you know if you're not stupid, that's not really a drawback. Um, just tighten them the same amount you tighten your normal pair of shoes but overall uh, I got this cool multi-cam pattern I think it looks cool it looks semi-tactical without looking all out you know weirdo if you just wear these with a pair of jeans or a pair of shorts um, you know at first glance they almost look like brown or maybe like brown or tan with some dirt or mud on them um, they are um, I think they look really nice. Like I said, I got the lower cut shoe pattern. Um, that way I can wear them with shorts, you know, without looking like some, you know, granola munching hippie backpacker type dude. Um, you know, at the same time, I wear them with the Vertex uh, tack -like tactical pants that I reviewed recently. I wear that combination together. You know, I think it looks just fine. I wear them with jeans, I wear them the shooting range, you know, this is a very, this is like the Leatherman wave of footwear. Um, if you're in knives and multi-tools, you'll understand that statement. It's pretty much, it can, it's, these are literally a multi-tool. They can handle so many different aspects of just your everyday life. Um, you know, you could even consider these part of your EDC because if you wear these every day, you know, um, but again, overall, no matter who you are, especially a prepper, and you're talking about get home bags and bugging out and getting home, walking, all that stuff, 